Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to worship for January 31st. We are wrapping up January and moving into February. Uh, even at the end of the month, we always do our annual meeting. And I just like to thank everyone who helped made that possible. Uh, those that came out, those who had served throughout 2020 and before, those that will be serving in 2021. Just thank you to everyone all connected with that. Uh, it is, you know, one of those pieces of being church that is necessary, a little time consuming. It is the nuts and bolts. It's the undergirding of living out the faith. And I thank those who helped make it possible. Now then, even as we enter into February, just a reminder, Lent will be here before we know it. Ash Wednesday is the 17th, so keep your eyes peeled. Word will be getting out, directions will be happening, so pay attention. Lent will be here before we know it. Well, those are just a couple announcements. Let us take a brief moment to gather our hearts and minds for worship. Let us begin with confession. Now, as the people of God, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, let us give thanks to the Lord with whole hearts. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Glory be to the one whose wonders are to be remembered. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Lord feeds the righteous with truth. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come, let us give thanks to God, the one who pardons, heals, and strengthens all who repent, calls us to name our failings and our hopes. Now, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. So together we confess. Holy and powerful God, who commands all spirits, comforts those in distress, and casts out destructive forces. We confess that we are unable to do your will. We protect what is familiar and reject what is unknown. We admire those with courage, but excuse ourselves when we falter from the truth. We forget that you are always with us and that with you all things are possible. Forgive us, lead us, make us new. Remove our desire to heed false prophets and show us your way. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. Now, the God who made you and knows your every thought hears you now and forgives you all your sin. You have been redeemed through Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior, who is Alpha and Omega, all in all. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our opening song is... Come, now is the time to worship. Thank you. 
Brothers and sisters, let us say together our opening dialogue. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. The Magi who study the heavens follow a guiding star. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. The peoples who live in the shadows see a glorious light. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord and consider what wondrous things God has done. The Christ who embodies the word unveils the hidden plan, making us joint heirs of the promise of salvation through the gospel. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord, for God has done wondrous things. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence, and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Burn wholeness to all that is broken, and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, little Lutherans. Pastor Mike here. Well, this morning, we have a lot of, I call them kind of harder texts. We talk a lot, a lot about things that are sometimes hard to understand. And so on some of those sorts of days, I like to remind people of some of the good and simple things. And I'm going to remind you guys of that. Now, it is 2021 and a lot is going on. And a lot of things are happening. You know, we're opening back up and those sorts of things. And 2021, one of the things that's good is that we are now getting more opportunities to love and help our neighbors, brothers and sisters. That's a good thing. We hear that about loving the neighbor in many and different ways in our letter from Paul. He says we should love the neighbor. Maybe we should do something. Maybe we shouldn't do something for the weak people. But here's the rub. Ultimately, we are wonderful children of God because we are baptized and God loves us. And when we have the opportunity to help somebody or love somebody, whether we think we're weak or whether we think we're strong, regardless, God has made us special with different gifts and different abilities. Maybe you're good at coloring. You can help somebody by coloring them a picture. Maybe as the place go, go opens up and the world opens up and you're a good helper, maybe you could help somebody clean, make sure things are going on. Maybe you're good at remembering and you can remind people to maybe use a bit extra hand sanitizer and these sorts of things. But regardless of all those other things going on, you are a wonderful child of God. And no matter what, God will always be there for you. So as we wrap up January and move to February, maybe you're going to go back to school soon. Maybe not. Who knows? But as we keep changing, that never will. All right. Blessings, my little Lutherans. You guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye now. The first reading this morning comes from the 18th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again see the great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or presumes to speak my name, a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 111. Please join me in its reading. Alleluia! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. 
You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Our second reading comes from the first letter to the Corinthians, the eighth chapter. Now, concerning, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, to the eating of food is offered to idols. We know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are many so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. Is not everyone, whoever, who has this knowledge? Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think that the food they ate is food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I might not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us greet the gospel by singing together, Alle, Alle, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And then the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, brothers and sisters, we continue in this Epiphany season, which is all about, as again, the Epiphany Tide is, reflecting back on that day, that Epiphany, that revelation through the coming of the Magi, who this one is. And the calling of the disciples throughout all of these pieces, we get that. Now, in Mark, one of the first things he does is he gets baptized, he calls the disciples, and then we have this reading, all, all within the first chapter. 
This is, in many ways, his first public act of ministry. In Mark, this is the opening of his work. And it's interesting because this opening, this almost this thesis statement, is key. And it reveals much about Jesus, it reveals much about us, and it reveals much about mission and ministry. So brothers and sisters in Christ, bear with me on this text. It is both fascinating and difficult. So here we have, here we have at the very beginning, Jesus going to this region of Capernaum or Capernaum, however you prefer to pronounce it. And as the Sabbath comes, he goes to teach. He is a rabbi. He is a teacher. He is wise. Because in many ways, he is God, so he is. So he is there. And he goes up, he picks up a scroll. Luke talks about a similar instance. And he preaches to them. He gives this, this Sabbath, this Saturday morning sermon, if you will, to all those gathered in this area. And they're amazed. It's good. Here is this visitor, here is this out-of-towner in some ways, who preaches well, preaches better than these scribes. And I choose better because it's interesting the word that they use authority. He teaches in spiritual authority as one who, who knows, who is aware, who is enlightened, and in many ways, honest and not hypocritical. He embodies what he preaches, and it should be no surprise for us, even though it is a surprise for them, because he is God. And so when he talks of the word, bears the word, preaches the word, he is the word. And we must never forget that. But, but something happens that hopefully never happens on opening sermons or opening worship services. There is a man there. And this is the real issue we deal with. There is a man there who is possessed. They use the term, a man with an unclean spirit. In the presence of Jesus, well, it compounds his problem. The Spirit is in the driving seat, and he is upset. I don't know if he's speaking in plural for himself or for all of his kind, but he stands up and he calls out Jesus. What are you doing here? What are you going to do with us? Are you here to destroy us? All of these things, he asks. And even then, there is the amazing reality. He says, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Probably in any other instance, questions of blasphemy would come up. But I think people are more concerned that, well, there is a possessed man yelling at the rabbi in the middle of worship. <laughs> and so what happens? Jesus. Jesus casts him out. He silences him. And removes him. And now this is an interesting piece. This is, in heart, the first healing, the first act connected with the first teaching of Jesus. And what is it? It is that weird and hard word of exorcism. People don't like it when I bring those up because you start to get old 70s movies in your head, do you not? Right? But bear with me. This man has an unclean spirit and Jesus removes it textbook. It is what it is. And I won't mince words about it. And even nowadays in our enlightened society, in our enlightened world, we don't think this is an issue. But in many ways it is. Because of this. At its heart, the issue here is that there was a force in the driving seat that was not good, was not right, and it was causing problems in this man's life. And guess what, brothers and sisters? That still happens today. And there are these unclean spirits that we see around us all of the time. For good or for ill, there is a reality that is common when a young person comes out of college. With how the college cultures work and all those other sorts of things, alcoholism is a real problem. And brothers and sisters, I will call that an unclean spirit, if you will. If you've known someone who has dealt with that issue, that struggle, they are 
in many ways possessed by this reality. They're not driving. Here is, here is this instance of an individual who the drinking has taken control and they are not living a whole healthy and good life. I've had friends from college and it was by faith in the 12 steps and by the love of Christ and by his authority that they shed and were liberated by this unclean spirit. You get where I'm going with this, brothers and sisters. Even today, we struggle with unclean spirits as we have throughout generations. There are things that threaten to take over the driving seat and lead us into dangerous positions. I can name many of them, and they don't have funny or weird names. Greed is a horrible unclean spirit. Do you know someone who has been so overtaken by the game, the chasing of wealth, they have made horrible decisions? There are individuals, and I think there have been movies like Uncut Gems, where individuals who have become so obsessed with gaining that money, gaining that wealth, they will risk life, livelihood, family for that big score. That's dangerous. That's an unclean spirit. Anger. And rage, I firmly believe, have become the great powers of today. We get angry, we get enraged by the other, we dehumanize them. We let our anger take the driving seat and cause us to say things and do things that are horrible, destructive, and inherently evil. But it whispers lies that we are right, we are good, we are powerful, we are just. Just give in to the anger. It is dangerous, and it is the terrors of our age. These forces that possess us, call us, guide us, and twist our perceptions and our hearings of what is good and right, and they take over like a cancer so there is no room for love and joy and peace. And brothers and sisters in Christ, this is what the text reveals. It is Christ who comes to liberate us from these oppressors, these horrible oppressors that ruin our lives and snake out and break and burn our relationships and hurt others that matter. He liberates us. And here's the rub. The liberation might not always be as easy as we'd like. Be silent and come out is what God says to us or to what might be whispering in our ear. But convulsing is what the man did. Sometimes we are way too comfortable with our demons. But brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the good news. We have a God who will see us and love us and guide us through those trials and tribulations. We say it in that prayer. Feed us from the time of trial. Well, sometimes if we still got to go through it, he walks us there to free us. To free us for himself. For the good ways of love, of life, of compassion, of peace. Over and over, he will take out the words of anger and hate and greed and all of those things that destroy life. And we'll put his word in our mouth. That is why we confess. That is why we are baptized. That is why we eat at his table and drink of his very body and blood. That is to what extent he will clean us, forgive us, and set us free. That, brothers and sisters, is the mission and ministry of Christ. It is the healing of the world, the healing of the nations, saving us from these things. So brothers and sisters in Christ, know that he comes to us with his word and his meal, a blessed word and meal, and in them is life and light. And they will cast out those things that do not belong. Amen.
Our song of the day is, I want to walk as a child of the light. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, together as God's people, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, let us gather together in prayer. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. We pray for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, our NAS bishop, Jeffrey Clements, our missionary, Kristen Engstrom, our companion churches both in Tanzania and in India. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church and its ministries, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For governments and their leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible with the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those who are living with HIV, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all who are in any need, especially today we pray for those who are affected by COVID-19, those who seek peace and harmony in our world, those whose needs we regularly hold in our hearts, especially those we name aloud or in silence and on our prayer chain. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, those who are absent from worship, those who celebrate birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place, 
and for other needs in our larger community, let us pray. Have mercy, O God, for the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, and thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Finally, in your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, the peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Share the peace with one another, those who are gathered with, those who you meet, and those who you encounter. Our offering again, uh, thank you to those who continue to support the mission and ministry of this place through deeds, through giving, uh, and through various means. Again, as we move into 2021, uh, we thank you for, as you plan ahead for this year, what gifts you will give to the church. Now, let us move on with the offering. Our offering song is Give Thanks. <laughs> Sisters, together let us pray our offering prayer. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful services to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Our song of thanksgiving this morning is Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. God is faithful and guides us, calls us, heals us, protects us, and he does this through his life-giving word. So let us give thanks for that word among us. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of all truths, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures. 
proclaiming to us your wisdom, and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. Your word came among us in Jesus, a brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. By your spirit, bless all who receive this word, that upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, both now and forever. Amen. Now, let us pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is, This is Amazing Grace. Thanks be to God. This is amazing grace.